Tanya changed my, um, my PowerPoint at the last minute because she said it was ugly and boring. I just want to point out, I had put together the PowerPoint with the intention of making it pretty, and then like life happened. And so, listen, don't judge me. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, so harassment game, cyberbullying for adults. I'm going to um, add to the trigger warnings by pointing out that I am both profane and some of these things might be disturbing. I know there are some tiny people in the audience. So if your kids don't want to hear about the things that can happen or you don't want your kids to hear about the things that can happen when you are a person of color on the internet, now would be a great time for them to go over there um, because a lot of the things that are going to be referenced are pretty violent and graphic, just so we're clear. Okay. First up, we're going to have a history lesson. Um, <laughs> so I don't know how many of you have been on the internet for the last 20 plus years. I realize I'm going to hit 25 years next year. It's a little bizarre. I'm old. Actually, he's old. I'm young. Uh, <laughs> so a lot of us rem may, are, may remember that the individual bad behaviors that were happening have always happened. You've always had people who would say nasty things to you. You could enter um, the old CompuServe and AOL chat rooms and the first thing they'd ask you was your age, sex, and race. And then invariably, especially when I was like 15, 16, there would be these people, as soon as you said that you were a 15-year-old girl, there was always somebody coming to say something sexually explicit and disgusting to you. Like that was just a given, right? So. To a certain degree, this was all normalized along with the development of the internet, right? The mob mentality thing was less common back in the, the yesteryear, but <laughs> listen, the antiquity of the internet, it's going to be a thing, just wait. <laughs> it's gotten easier with each successive platform, right? We, we move into Reddit, into Chan culture, whether 8chan or 4chan or some other Chan, I don't remember because I didn't like Chan, um, and suddenly it becomes a group thing where people feel comfortable piling on in support of someone, whether they know what that person is mad about, whether they know if that person is right or not, it, it becomes what I call the harassment game. So this takes us towards Race Fail 2009. Now for those of you who weren't on Live Journal and who weren't into sci-fi circles, you're going, Race Fail. For those of you who were there, you're going, dear God, Mickey, why? <laughs> It turns out that when fans of color start talking to authors about erasure and um, tropes, you know, magical Negro, that kind of thing, sometimes authors don't like it. And they get very offended and they say things. And the things they say are terrible. And some of them are, as it turns out, Nazis. Yes, I'm talking about Vox Day. I've already blocked Vox Day, so whatever. Um, but you then move into this space where sci-fi intersects very rapidly with the real world. Back at that point, the targets were primarily people of color and other marginalized people, but it was heavily slanted towards people of color. And we kind of said then, like, this is going to get much worse because that's when you first hit doxing as a consistent thing. That's when you first start to hit these, these major attacks on people's blogs and comments and whatever. And back then, in the yesteryear of the internet, a kismet on WordPress was amazing. It still is. So you didn't have to see it. And I know people are going to laugh, but LiveJournal had one of the best innate blocking features of any platform I've ever seen. Not because LiveJournal was great at it, but LiveJournal assumed that what you wanted to block someone that meant you didn't want to see them. Thank you. So you couldn't talk to me. You couldn't see myself if you were logged in. You just were invisible to me. And then we move on to Tumblr, Twitter, all of these other platforms. And blocking suddenly goes away of the dodo. Um, along with it goes the community structure that LiveJournal used to have where you could create closed communities and curate who talk to you. Suddenly now, your content, you can't choose. Either you're all the way open or you're all the way closed, right? And so we get to a point where black feminists on Twitter were targeted. Well, black people on Twitter were targeted, period. Called your slip is showing. And we called it that because they made fake accounts and pretended to be black. And they had a whole plan and a couple of boards, and this was a really dumbass thing with a bunch of 15-year-olds or so it seemed like at the time. Except it was the precursor to what you know as Gamergate. And back then, 
during your slip is showing. A whole lot of folks who are now learning the horrors of Gamergate were like, oh, it's just some kids. It's not a big deal. They'll stop. It'll go away. Well, I hate to put my I told you so pants on, but my I told you so pants are on. <sighs> Way back on LiveJournal, um, LiveJournal support had figured out that approximately 75 to 85% of the trolling and harassment and foolishness that happened on their platform came from 300 dedicated users. There were people who would literally make accounts every day just to troll, right? And so knowing that they had this handful of users, they instituted IP blocking, which is a magical thing. <laughs> IP blocking, get into it. It kept LiveJournal and DreamWith and some of the other platforms from getting as bad as what we're seeing on Twitter, right? Twitter is the face of the online harassment. Twitter is actually not where it began. Twitter is sort of where it's the most public because on Twitter, since everybody can see everything, unless you completely lock your account, for the first time, you're seeing the messages that were showing up in inboxes. You're seeing the things that were showing up pretty much anywhere. And, oops, did I go the wrong way? I did. It happens. Don't judge me. And so then the conversation kind of became, how are these things being triggered? <sighs> so A, being marginalized on the internet, I'm going to be honest. I, I did an experiment where I changed my avatar to that of a white man. Um, as a follow-on to At The Way of the Ed, my friend Jamie, doing it as a joke, she mentioned that she was getting much less harassment. So we were like, okay, we'll do race, race swap. We'll figure it out. Um, man, being a white man on the internet is amazing. Like, this shit is amazing. Nobody argues with you. People don't call you names. They don't threaten you. They have actual conversations with you. Magic. All of the white guys who borrowed my picture or the pictures of other black women lasted about an hour. Some didn't last that long. Um, because they realized that the triggers could be completely unknown, first of all, but also petty conflicts. They could disagree with someone, and five seconds later, everything was going astray, which takes us here. So that would be one of the most interesting messages. I don't know why it came through this way, but it, it says, I wrote about having a medically necessary second trimester abortion. It was medically necessary because I had a placental abruption. I was hemorrhaging. This was not a viable fetus. There was no question. We'd had that conversation 15 times. The conversation had moved on to, so I don't do abortions, but you kind of need one, so we have to find someone. We have to get you help, but I can't do it um, because I wasn't going to stop bleeding. I'd had two transfusions. I was still bleeding. We had a problem. So I wrote about that. And a woman named Jill Stanek, who you can look her up. She thinks that Chinese people eat babies. I'm just going to say that she's the fringe of pro-life that even pro-life people disavow. She has followers, though. She has a lot of, pol of followers who do things like threaten the blow up clinics, bring guns to shoot people at clinics in medicine. As a matter of fact, he shot himself in the foot. Just want to point that out. Um, I became her favorite target for a while. And I have two children. This was not a decision made in the, I just don't want to have a baby. This was a decision made in that I don't want to die sense. Jill didn't care. Um, so she harped and she harped and she harped. And I got, you the lying nigger bitch that wanted a free abortion. What I can't figure out is how your ugly ass got pregnant. Your old man blind. Fuck you, lying cunt. How many babies have you left on the floor so far? He continued in that vein. I will leave out the threats to lynch me and the ones about um, sexually assaulting me and cutting off my head in front of my children. Yeah, um, my children were also threatened with violence. I don't really understand how this pro-life thing works. One of you will have to figure it out for me later. <laughs> like, I could be wrong. I don't know. Um, but what was interesting was that he was not anonymous. That's his real name. If you were to go and you were to click on his account, good old Cameron who made sure to attach a picture of a gun, he changed his avatar to a picture of a gun just for me, um, You'd find that he's a grandfather of three, married, kids. He's about 60-something. Kind of looks like Santa Claus. This wasn't a kid. This wasn't harmless, right? This wasn't an anonymous account by some troll. This was a guy 
with a gun, carrying a lot of them, who was so angry at me that he threatened me mm, about three hours worth of messages. And you go to the police. The harassment game is no longer fun, let me tell you. And the cops look at you and they kind of go, we don't know what to do because it's not here and it's just the internet. Except, oh shit, I mean, it's not just the internet. And at the time, I was lucky. I worked for the federal government off and on for years. And part of my job, because I had security clearance, was I had to disclose anything that could be a threat, could be blackmail, blah, blah, blah. So I went in, I did my disclosure meeting, and the agent looked at me and said, these motherfuckers, I got this, don't worry about it. And I'm looking at him like, but what are you going to, don't worry about it. I did not know, and this is really luck, I had happened to catch an agent who was fed the fuck up with the internet harassment. <laughs> he has already had it. So he went to Cameron's house. <laughs> he took all of the messages to Cameron's house. He wore the badge, he wore the gun, he took friends, and he knocked on the door, and he started reading his messages. And Cameron burst into tears. Because Cameron didn't want his wife to know what he'd been doing. He didn't want his kids or grandkids or neighbors to know. Why are you doing this to me? Stop, stop, stop. You sent these messages. This is your account. You told this woman you were going to do these things to her. I'd like to talk to you about that. I haven't heard from Cameron since. I'm going to assume Cameron doesn't want to mess with me. <laughs> And so, you know, you get those messages, and then the picture that did not come through, well, okay, we're just gonna not worry about it, was a Twitter account someone made called Kill All Cunts. Threatens to rape people. He just sits there for several hours. Um, there's a guy named Assholster on Twitter. Well, not anymore. Who, I don't know what he does, but he has time to make 472 accounts. And I mean that, literally, one night we started to count. And then one day, he burned 472 emails just to message people. And so that's the part of the game that's super friends, right? But then you get to Gamergate, all of its friends, and there's a lot of, there are a lot of 15-year-old kids there that think this is harmless, that have no idea what bandwagon they've jumped on, right? They aren't necessarily going to send you these kinds of messages, but they'll tell you you're ugly, They'll, you know, throw out fags. They, for some reason, like to tell me that I look like Whoopi Goldberg. I'm not really sure why that's supposed to be offensive, but it's a favorite thing. Things like that. And it's the tenor of that that can run, run you off. Like, these are scary. Don't get me wrong. But, you know, I live in a state where you can get a Floyd card and a gun, so I can work that out. I don't quite know what to make of the fact that they are fomenting these kids up to participate in the tenor and the ongoing doxing and the harassment. And it will drive you off the internet if you can't take it. And I'm not saying you should have to take it. I'm just saying that that's the goal, is to make you get off the internet. You know, I get, I have a security concern at this particular conference. It's a shared security concern with more than one person, I think, in this room. He keeps trying to register for things I'm attending. And I've never met this man. I've never had an actual negative conversation with him. But he likes to say that someone should cut off my head. Someone should tear me apart. Someone should rape me and kill me in front of my family, and then kill them. Then he says he didn't say that. He got really upset when I started talking about finding a pig farm to put him in, but he'll be all right. <laughs> Listen, I was in the army. I might have some tendencies. <laughs> you know, but this is the game, right? Like, they're getting something from doing this. Well, in the case of the guy who's our security concern, he had a Patreon account. He called it, what was it, um, performance art, I think was how they described this. And he encouraged the women he was targeting to talk about the fear he inspired as part of his performance art. He was literally making money to threaten and harass us. Yes, yes, he's getting paid. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's a guy named Will Shadowy. He has a book, Social Justice Warriors. I'm in the book. A lot of us are in the book. Yeah, he wrote the book and then he tried to get Gamergate to buy it. 
like there's a financial profit in this. And he goes back to where his fellow nine and he's grown as grown can be. So again, not a kid. So the harassment game for some of the leaders is financially profitable. The kids who are following them, they get the ego strokes, they get the kudos from each other. It's a competition. It literally is the gamification of stalking. And you will see them come back. I've begun to hit that point now. Where they'll send me a message, they create a new account or whatever, and they send me a message and they say, I'm sorry. I, I, I was the one who sent you insert thing here. I'm apologizing to people I did that to. Many of them were 15 years old when they did it, 14 years old, and now they're 21, 22. I've been at this a long time. Um, some of them have reached a place where they're the targets, which is a really interesting conversation to have, particularly for the women who were trying to be cool teenage girls in Chan culture and Chan circles. So that takes us to the platform changes. Because platform tools make a real difference in that you can stay on the internet through this. WordPress is amazing. Akismet will block everything. You just tell it what words, like I have a kismet set so I can't see the word nigger anymore. Man, that took out like 200 messages. It took out all the people who want to send me threats about lynching me and whatever. I'm gonna, oh, I need to add lynching to that list. Um, there's a guy who has an account on, on Tumblr, he keeps making them, to fill my ask box with lynching pictures. That's what he does, he sends me pictures of lynchings. That's all he does. I'm not really sure what kind of hobby that is, but all right. It's a thing for someone somewhere. He just keeps making more accounts to do it. Um, you know, but LiveJournal? Man, they really try on LiveJournal to send me things. LiveJournal rebukes them so thoroughly. Which has then taken them to the Facebook and the other box. Don't open your other box if you are marginalized on the internet. The other box is not your friend. Even if the other box is your friend, have somebody else look at it occasionally, I promise. Others is, mm, because Facebook will at least do you that courtesy of putting it somewhere else. Facebook is however terrible about everything else, because when I sent Facebook Cameron Bard's lovely missive, they told me to block him. That was it. Tumblr told me to close my ask box. That was pretty much it. You can block him. Okay, but he makes no accounts. Close your ask box. And Twitter. So I've actually talked to people at Twitter headquarters. I've, I've talked to their heads of abuse and security and blah, blah, blah. I've had conversations with people who work at four near various platforms. And they all kind of look at me when Twitter comes up and they sigh and they go, I know. But I'm talking to them. I know more people in dev who have been trying to get Twitter to do. And meanwhile, and this is why I love you people. I love geeks. Third party source had to come into existence for Twitter. Like you didn't really need them for most of the other platforms. But for Twitter, blocked together, blocked bot, all of these things suddenly became absolutely necessary in order for you to be online at all. Because if you're not using Twitter, and you're someone who writes things, you might as well not be someone who writes things at this point. So I can still be on the internet through the tenor of all of this because I use Block Together and BlockBot. I share lists with some folks, but right now I think I'm blocking 152,000 people. Except they're not really people. Most of them are, are, are bots because that's the other downside of this. There are harassment bots as part of the harassment game. You don't even have to be good at it. You don't have to send messages. You just have to go and learn how to do the code and make an account. And the account will do it for you. It will scrape harassment threats and tweets and stuff and just send them to random people or send them to the, your specific target. Modern technology, it's amazing. So you use those, but then you still have to worry about being doxxed. I've already been doxxed. Um, at this point, I sort of have a theory that you might as well expect to be doxxed if you're marginalized on the internet. Just get ready for it. Go to Spokio, whitepages.com, all those sites. Make sure your actual home address is in there, isn't in there. Use, use the who's it's for your website so that your real name and address isn't listed in your website data. But also be aware 
something could still happen. When the, the stuff was going on with the pro-lifers, I got docked by accident. Friend who always talked about the name of the complex we were living in didn't think about the fact that someone else who they knew and who was adjacent to pro-lifers would also talk about the name of that complex. We were living in Memphis at the time. There was one apartment complex with that name. So I got a picture of me and my kids walking across the parking lot. Yeah, we moved. My mother-in-law was like, yeah, you gotta come back here to Chicago. And we moved, you know, to the hood for a while. I mean, if you're a far right wing stalker, come to 90th and Parnell. <laughs> I'm gonna pray you through that trip. I mean, if you can get there, listen, I'll be waiting for you. I might even have some cookies and a drink. Because you won't want to fight with me no more by the time you get there. <laughs> but so, you know, things like crash override exist. Um, and they exist because at this point, as part of the harassment game, it's phone calls and have been pizzas sent to you and calling your job and all of these other things. My old job, I don't actually work there anymore, so it's really funny. People keep calling. They, they find my LinkedIn, which hasn't been updated in a million years because I don't remember my LinkedIn password. Uh, <laughs> well, I haven't figured out the purpose of LinkedIn yet, so I just, I don't, I don't know. And so they call my old job to tell them I'm doing things, I'm saying things, I exist on the internet. And then I worked for the Department of Veterans Affairs, so this isn't smart. Because even though I don't work there, VA has no problem being like, well, we're getting harassing calls from this place and these people and sending people with badges and guns. Um, it's not actually smart nor profitable to do this, but you're 15, you're 16, you don't know better. And the people who do know better, while they're not paying you, they're making money off what you're doing. That's the goal. So, you know, the ego stroke of playing the harassment game is how the kids get in. The profit off taking a bigger corner of the marketplace, off fundraising and calling it performance art to harass, or any one of a dozen other things, because we could talk about the puppies and the Hugos, but like half of you will look at me blankly, and the other half will be like, I'm not talking about the fucking puppies anymore, so it's okay. <laughs> there is a profit margin, there is a social capital in doing this. And the danger of the harassment game, and I love the fact that there are tools to help, but the danger of the harassment game is that you wind up with a monoculture in public and a whole lot of people frightened in private. So, you know, we have to work with each other, but also you can no longer passively ignore it when it's happening. When the women of color, because they always start in marginalized spaces, like I know that we're seeing white women as the face of this, but they always start with women of color, trans women of color, like they start over here. It, when we say, hey, this is a problem, this person, this, this thing is a problem, Gamergate wouldn't exist if someone had listened during your slip is showing over the preceding six years. I'm just saying. No, literally, if you go back to Racefeld 2009, you can find all of the big names in Gamergate way back then. All right, so lightning round. Questions, comments, concerns? My question is, the cyber harasser stopped when an armed officer showed up at his house and read his messages to him in front of his family. Very effective stopping method. He, you never heard from him again. But how do we scale that? So I want you to write your congressman. I really, really want you to write your congressman. I want you to get it on the books in each state. Kind of, I'm not even saying that people have to go to jail. I'm not a huge fan of jail as a solution. But it's not illegal to do this in a lot of states. It's not illegal to do revenge porn in a lot of states. If they say someone should, it's no longer a threat in some states. I will is a threat. Someone should is technically not a threat. Don't ask me how you draw that line. I'm just saying that's what the law in some states says. Your congressman has to make it so that the cops have to respond, that the cops know how to respond. That the cops understand that, yes, yes, it's the internet, but cars, planes, and trains exist. So if a guy in Kentucky threatens me, sure, he can't be at my house 10 minutes after he threatens me, but he can't be at my house the next day. 
He could be someplace I'm speaking. He could be at my readings or whatever because the guy that's our problem tried to register for this conference. He tried to register for a conference I was doing in New York last month. They try to sign up for your readings or whatever. Or they can just show up. So you ha it has to be legal. They have to take it seriously. Sure, 99% of these threats are credible. The problem is it only takes one bullet. Other questions? So I know about, alt about crash override, but what about in the case of your work and they may not be able to change your information? Because if you Google me, the first place that comes up is where I work. So that's when your boss has to get involved in HR, and they have to have a conversation about changing their internal policy. Because one of the things, yes, your name and information is made public for the, the, the students to be able to come in. Maybe there should be a security guard at the front that will make sure the person coming in is a student. I mean, if your college or campuses are going to have all these lovely armed police forces, maybe they could serve and protect. <laughs> Crazy talk, I know, but maybe they could do something besides write tickets. Just a thought. I mean, our, our campus security is armed, but Mickey has visited my office. I work in a glass cube. Should someone get it in their head to come visit me, there's not a lot I can do. Which is why they need to have a guard. Okay, anything else? I won't really run like a rolling door machine. The room is fine. I've been sitting a long time. You just don't need to run all the window. So do you think if um, someone were building a new social network and they really took this into account right from the start, I mean, do you think this is something that could be mitigated if it was a priority in the beginning? If platforms made it hard to play the game from the beginning, that critical mass of mom mentality is difficult to build, right? If you know tweeting these kinds of things, because a lot of platforms have rules, but then they'll say things like nigger isn't, that, that's free, free, free speech, and I really want to explain to many platforms, you're not the government. You're not. That First Amendment applies to the government. You don't have to tolerate threats and harassment and racially charged language and insults and yada yada. You don't have to. And you would find, I suspect, like there's a big thing about black Twitter. Well, we, can, we kind of mob up together when there's a problem. One of the reasons you see this big cultural push, most of us know each other from other platforms. We've already been through this before. And Twitter doesn't allow the individual user to control much, so we have to come together. You know, if you start really going at someone, you'll see me or some of the others, hey, so-and-so, doesn't have anybody we know, can we go flush their mentions and, and get these trolls up out of here? Block, mock, I refer to people as goats, mega, spend all these things. We develop these tools. But it'd be so much easier if a block and report meant that the platform took care of it. And that person couldn't keep talking to you, couldn't keep sending people to talk to you. So I think building it in from the start and then advertising it. You get a lot of users. You get a lot of users happy to pay for the privilege of not dealing with the crap. Anybody else? Just say, didn't it used to be originally on Twitter where if you blocked somebody, they couldn't even mention you, and then like some years later they changed that? Yeah, Twitter hollowed out their block feature repeatedly over the years. I'm not really clear on, at one point blocking, you couldn't see the person talking to you. Now you have to block and meet them. So Twitter has done a really strange series of code pushes behind the scenes. And I think the answer I got once was it was about engagement. But engagement numbers are, <laughs> engagement doesn't mean that you're talking to someone you want to talk to. Engagement might mean that Adam Baldwin has sent all three million of his followers to troll someone. So, anybody else? So, I, uh, this is great. What do you think about like the reverse, the reverse docs? Like, I know a lot of people on Black Tumblr, but I'm not as familiar with Twitter, but I know a lot of the things coming from Twitter, some will show their ass, and then people will get together and be like, this is where they work. You know, you can call them and tell them that they're being racist or whatever. What do you think about that? I'm, I'm divided. I think that in the case where 
the person showing their ass is doing so in a way that is related to their work, right? If you tell me that someone works with kids and they're currently posting pictures of child porn or threatening to dox a kid or whatever, then their boss should probably know that. People should probably step in because there are rules about that. If they work at a pizza place, maybe not so much. Um, in part because I'm not entirely certain of how effective that is, right? If you're calling someone's job to get them fired and they work at Joe Bob's Pizza Place, okay, they don't work at Joe Bob's anymore. They work at Jim Bob's now. Like, I'm not certain that the lesson is penetrating that I should not have said the thing. Instead, it becomes the internet bullied me. So I, I am split. I think sometimes it is necessary. I think sometimes it is too much. Anybody else? Oh, thank you. He said my shoes are awesome. Wonder Woman's shoes are important. They're a necessity. All right, if that's it, then that's my time. Thanks for coming. <laughs>